Oh my god, he's not dead after all. All right, let's do a dark gaming collection update here on the Noctilucan channel. <laughs> First we have Svartsen's Collected Obscurities album. Um, I bought this probably about seven or eight months ago and uh, I kind of bought it just to kind of fill the holes that were uh, in my Svartsen collection. Uh, Svartsen, as you may or may not know, is the long-running dark ambient project of Jan Roger Peterson from Norway and uh, he plays extremely minimal, bleak, cavernous, just dark, creepy ambient music. And uh, this is yeah, a collection of all of his compilation tracks, tributes, and uh, the three tracks from the Nord Ambient Alliance split back in 2000. Um, this is just typical and classic of arts in here, 100%. Um, if you've enjoyed any of the full-length albums, you can get this, and it has that same similar vibe. Uh, very minimal, but there's just something about um, his music that makes it so appealing, just like Kind of the same thing that's in like Kammer Heights music too, so yeah, Sivartsen. Um, this is a really cool album, like to kind of nap on and stuff like that because it just kind of, you know, kind of, you get a little floaty like when you kind of drift off to sleep with this one, and I, I really dig that. Uh, and it, it would be perfect except for the very last track as a sample from a movie or something like that, so every time I put this on with the purpose of napping with it, then uh, I forget about the track, then I get woke up. <laughs> but whatever. So the front cover, or the whole, Leo in general is extremely minimal as a sort of, I don't know, kind of text on cough, but you can't immediately see it. You gotta certainly bring the certain light or something like that. So that is Savartsen's Collected Obscurities. All right, continuing on, we're gonna talk about a project I came across, I believe, last year when the, the project's one and only member, Juan Carlos Toledo, sent me a couple albums for review here on the Not Limited channel. And you may recall I did the one review for Hyperborea, and I had the intention back then to review all three of these albums, but uh, I didn't do it. So I feel like a total asshole that this is taking like a year to get to or something, I think. But uh, anyway, we're going to talk about uh, Hyamis' uh, La Chuse and uh, Ewell album, album, which is on, as you can see, both cassette and uh, digi sleep, I guess I call them or whatever. Um, Hyamis' style is sort of a, I don't know, sort of the, I guess, like, neoclassical-ish kind of dark ambient, I, I would say. I feel like there's, you know, moments that remind me of, like, old Razan Dietra and stuff like that. But it, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of apart from that still, though. It just sounds like it's possibly influenced by, like, uh, like, I don't want to say New Age music, but, you know, uh... Uh, I don't know, dark wave maybe? I guess maybe like some dark wavey kind of stuff. It has more of a melodic character and then, as I said, uh, a lot of neoclassical-ish kind of vibes going on both of these albums. And this is definitely the more neoclassical-ish between the two, and has some more dark ambient vibes going on. But uh, if you like that style, this is just really good, man. Uh, yeah, you know, probably, you know, more in that more melodic direction and more dark wave-ish than dark ambient, but, you know, it's got a dark character and it's really good. I just really enjoy this and I feel like a jerk again for, it's a not, not showing a jerk for such a long time. So anyway, there's the front, pretty simple. There's the back and it comes with two stickers or one sent these two stickers to me in the care package you sent me. I don't recall, but yeah, focus, no, whatever. Then uh, the cassette for Thule. And uh, this is a cassette, of course, and I should note that it does sound very good. So I'm glad uh, you know, cassettes don't sound complete shit like they did back in the day, or what I perceived them all to sound like shit back in the day, whatever. <sighs> yeah. So uh, that is Hyamis with, with Thule and La Chuse or something. All right, continuing on, we're gonna have an album that is, I think, uh, in all pretty much all dark game and circles, people would consider this album to be a classic. And uh, fortunately, it's only—I don't think it's ever been re-released. So uh, somewhere along the way, it became, you know, very hard to get, and generally, I'm um, gonna have to pay uh, 
I, I had seen anywhere from like 40 to 80 dollars for this album on uh, Discogs and eBay in the past couple of years. But uh, then I got lucky and I found one for 20 bucks, so I quickly snatched it up. And the album in question here is Sephiroth and their debut album, Cathedron. Um, Sephiroth is, or was, is a, I don't know if the project's still active or exactly, but uh, was the project of Ulf, Cedar, Ulf Soderberg from Sweden. And uh, it's a very unique style of bleak, dark, haunting am ambience basically intermingled with a uh, sort of like tribal percussion. Um, it's sort of like polar opposites, and it's certainly not an album like you could like meditate on or something like that, I guess. But uh, it has that sort of you know dark, relaxing, uh, meditative, dark ambient quality. Then that intermingled with something much more, uh, I guess, abrasive, really. Um, I think to a lesser extent, you can maybe also file this under like ritualistic dark ambient because it, you know it has the percussions and all that. But uh, I don't know. It's it doesn't have a really occulty vibe to it, at least not in my opinion. I, I, I don't know, I guess everyone's different, but anyway, it was released on Cold Maid Industry, so, you know, another classic of the Cold Maid Industry roster. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, it's been on a print for a long time, and getting a copy isn't very easy, but I think it is on, like, Spotify or something like that. I don't know, I mean, I don't pay attention enough, but anyway, original press here, so super cool to get one, you know, and relatively cheap, too. This is the back cover. Again, trees, uh, more uh, text and photos. So, yeah, really cool to have this finally. Uh, uh, sort of a funny uh, final thought to this whole thing is that uh, old uh, Soderberg back in the day, he, uh, I, mean, I mean, really like back in the day, like back in the mid 80s, he was like in a, a Swedish boy band or something like that. and. I guess he's really embarrassed by it, by it, and refuses to talk, uh, you know, answer interviews, questions about it over the years. But I felt like it's my obligation just to let you know that, like, if you think this is dark and powerful and ritualistic evil music or something, just remember this guy was in a fucking boy band once. Continuing on is another album that uh, I had had on my radar for a really long time. It's an artist I heard, jeez, probably at least 20 years ago through their album, which was called Hindenburg. And I uh, always said to myself, like, if you ever see any predominance albums buy them because you'll probably enjoy them and this is certainly the case here with uh predominance's very last album nocturnal gates of incidents uh, uh predominance was a german project that uh i guess formed as far as early as 1994 and then disbanded it officially in 2017 although he literally released nothing after this album this album came on 2000 so uh it's hard to say exactly when the project disbanded. I mean, I don't know, maybe he just played live after uh, after the summer. I don't really know, but uh, uh, Predominance is a very interesting band that kind of intermingles, you know, classic dark ambient with uh, I guess like industrial um, beats and, you know, just kind of a more industrial atmosphere to it while still you know, totally being in a you know, a dark ambient style for the, the bulk of it anyway. Um, there's also some songs with vocals or chanting, and it's... Some of the songs are interesting because they actually have sort of like a verse-chorus-verse structure to them, so they're definitely more an industrial style than dark ambient, but, you know, still got the characters kind of, you know, in the underlying, the underlying characteristics of it, so it's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, if you had to officially label this band, it's definitely, you know, dark ambient industrial music, but, uh... Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's just, it's got more of that kind of electronic pulse to it at times, too. It's just, uh, it's different and it sounds, I mean, it's German and it sounds German, I guess. I don't know. So <laughs> there's the front cover. There's the back cover. And this is an original pressing that I scored off of Discogs for, uh, well, it was actually brand new, still wrapped. I was like totally stoked. So I, you know, I thought it was a little bit harder to get their stuff, but it was a brand new copy, still wrapped, and I got it for. Ten dollars or something. I was like, hell yeah, man! I was released on Loki Foundation back in 2000. Definitely interesting if you want something a little more industrial sounding while still maintaining some, uh, for sure, dark ambient qualities. All right, next up, I wanted to talk about features an artist uh, that came from one of my favorite bands. Uh, and since going solo, he's been releasing more music and uh, you know, like a dark ambient drone and even kind of metalish style. I 
I <laughs> reviewed one of his albums about a year ago, so the album question here is uh, John Hom and Matthias Grassal and their album uh, Apollos, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, well, John Hom, he of course comes from Igalock, and he, uh, with that band, you know, he kind of put, uh, you know, dark metal or more atmospheric blackish pagan metal on the map here in the United States for sure but he's of course not to be you know necessarily seen as the main mastermind of Vagalex he certainly was you know several other very talented musicians that he played with over the years but since he was the front man I guess he sort of you know gets seen as or he was the front man and the original founder of the band so he kind of gets seen as the mastermind and the leader uh, but yeah <laughs> uh, Matthias Grassall then is to the Best of my knowledge, an old school German ambient, dark uh, ambient, new age ish and soundtrack ish kind of sounding musician. I don't know, when I first got this, I listened to some of his stuff and some of his stuff, and I definitely dug it, but it just. I don't know if it wasn't dark enough for me or something? I, I don't know, but uh. Yeah. Uh, so basically, my understanding of this album is that. I think when John was still touring with uh, Igalock, or maybe it was the band he did after Igalock, he had, you know, dates in Germany, he met up with uh, Matthias, and they just basically jammed some shit out, and they recorded like several hours of it, and then just kind of compiled it into the, this album. And uh, I think this is the third collaboration they've released together, and I've enjoyed them all very much. This is a... Uh, very, very spacey and sort of celestial sounding uh, drone ambient, basically. Uh, this is definitely stuff that will really just drift away to. Very chill stuff, but I guess, like, it's all improvised, too. So I guess, yeah, John uh, hooked his guitar up to all his pedals and just made sounds, and Matthias, Matthias, how do I say it? He did his keyboards or whatever he usually uses to make all his droney stuff, and yeah, then they made a. Uh, Several hours in, this is sort of like the cut down uh, commercial version of that three hour song or whatever, which is good, it makes sense. So you can actually enjoy it then. So, uh, um, has a picture, uh, painting on the front, which may be John Holmes, I don't know. Back cover. There's a little uh, part of the lecture from Alan Watts, if you know who he is. And there's a picture of John and Matthias. I had asked John to. Sign this for me after I bought it off of Bandcamp, so that was cool. And uh, there's another uh, equipment they use and the tray card. Yeah, super cool. But yeah, really, really droney, very spacey stuff here. While not, you know, being spacey and beat or whatever like that. That wasn't really intention, but it definitely has that spacey, almost kind of psychedelic quality to it. So uh, yeah, I definitely dig it. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely look this up if you're into that more droney stuff or just or curious to see what John's been doing since uh, Igalock came to their own. Alright, so up next is uh, not one, but uh, two albums from Taphophobia. We have uh, the debut album, which has been re-released here, uh, House of Memories, which was originally released in, I want to say, 2005 by Reverse Alignment. It gets reissued here with... Uh, a bonus disc that basically, I guess, contains like various uh, collaboration and compilation tracks, which is super cool. And then we have uh, his most recent album, The Blue Hour, released by Cyclic Law. Uh, so, I did a trade with Kitel back in maybe October, November of last year? I don't know. And I uh, sent him some of my shitty albums, and he sent me some of his good albums. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Interesting about House of Memories is that it uh, kind of represents a more, hmm, I guess, a more sort of like industrial and kind of more old school version of Taphophobia. Whereas the more familiar sound, at least to my ears, is that more drony, dreamy, kind of melancholy ish sound that he's you know, become more well known for, like on his new album Blue Hour, which we have playing in the background right now. It's, uh, yeah, I think that's more his. It's like his guitar drone sound that he's become well known for. Uh, but yeah, this is this first one's a little different, a little more abrasive and more sounds like he was uh, kind of maybe thinking back to the, well, I guess uh, Cold Meat wasn't dead back then, but thinking back, you know, it's a the more old school 90s Cold Meat vibes and stuff like that. So really cool. And then, yeah, you get all these uh, 
bonus tracks on the second disc, all those compilation stuff, so that's super cool. It was definitely nice to get all that and hear all that. And, you know, again, the, the familiar Taphophobia sound is certainly uh, present on all those tracks at this point. A little info there, and then uh, there's at least one, one of the two CDs, the other ones. Oh, wait, they are both there. Yeah, so there's the two CDs. <laughs> God, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so, yeah, then the front cover here for the Blue Hour is a very, uh, oh, very blue. And then there's a the back cover, and then because I like collecting dark ambient signatures, I asked Ketil to sign it for me, and he did right there with what looks like a really shitty pen, but it's fine. It's fine. I still appreciate it doing it. <laughs> and there's a the trade card there for that one. So, uh, yeah, you know, a nice kind of trip uh, in the past and then into the current with these two. So, yeah, if you don't want to, if you've ever heard Taphophobia and been like, wow, this is like. Not my thing, it's too dreamy or something. But definitely check out this first one because it has more you know, industrial qualities. And if you already like Taphophobia, well, it's you know, just like his last album, really great stuff. And man, awesome, I love it. So, uh, Taphophobia. All right, one more for this dark ambient collection update. And it's the latest album from my good buddy, Mande Yulman, and his album, Beneath Bridgewater, released by Spun Out of Control Records. Well, if you've watched this channel for any period of time, really, you might know who Mambe Yulman is. He's sort of my co-host of this channel, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, obviously he's posted his vlogs over here, and I have uh, shared his music uh, quite a bit on here, too, and I like it quite a bit. Um, Mambe Yulman's been going for about, well, I think at least five years now, maybe six years, and he's basically creates cinematic, dark ambient, soundtrackish music. Uh, centered around cryptids. Um, this one centers around the Bridgewater Triangle, which I guess is some sort of notorious uh, area in, I think, North Carolina for cryptids, where people are like, oh yeah, I've seen Bigfoot or whatever, you know, I mean, I, I don't know the list of cryptids off my head right now, but you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, there's a lot, I mean, a lot of incidents of that kind of stuff here, UFO sightings or people have disappeared from UFOs, all that kind of stuff. So basically the music is very soundtrack-ish, very melodic and with, you know, dark ambient characteristics. Uh, it definitely unfolds like a soundtrack, which is really cool. And just like the whole layout of this looks like an old school, like 80s cassette tape too, which is super cool. And that's, there's definitely a lot of like nostalgic, nostalgic kind of vibe behind this label. I definitely dig it. I was, uh, when I ordered this, I was thinking about ordering some more, but the, the shipping was kind of expensive, and then even after I bought it, for some reason it took like a month and a half to get here, which I really didn't understand, because it, I mean, it was coming from England, but like I ordered something from Poland like two weeks ago, and it already got here, so what's the excuse? Poland's farther or farther away in England, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's a label from England, and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic artwork, so let's check that out. Really cool. Um, you know, as I said, it's kind of, you know, got that very 80s retro kind of look to it. And I don't want to assume, of course, but, you know, it's seemingly anything that's like 80s-ish looking these days, these days is possibly influenced by Stranger Things. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's that. So, yeah, I wanted to order, I was th thinking about ordering more from the label, but, uh, yeah, just expensive shipping, and I didn't really know what to order because I hadn't heard anything, wasn't from any artists. But uh, you can get that uh, from Spun Out of Control. I think they still have some copies on their uh, Bandcamp sites, but uh, I don't know if this particular version is available. There was a different colored version, too, so uh, I'm glad I got this. Um, you know, congrats to Mambe on getting on up. Not a bigger label, label per se, but getting an international label is certainly cool for getting your name out there. And it sold really well on their web or on the Bandcamp site too. So doing it, man, doing it. Um, but yeah, this is just great. I mean, I, I don't want to necessarily say it's his best album ever, but it's definitely up there in his discography if you if you've enjoyed his music and uh, yeah. So you know, melodic, dark ambient here, uh, soundtrackish vibes, a lot of. Uh, I don't know, like beats and stuff that kind of bring me back to like those old John Carpenter soundtracks and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, some samples from people talking about the Bridgewater Triangle. So it has a very cinematic effect with that sort of like, you know, sampled narration or whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah, great stuff. Uh, you guys know I love Mambi Yulman's music, so not a whole lot to say. Beneath Bridgewater by Mambi Yulman. All right, guys, thank you for joining me here on the Noctilucan channel. My name is Joe, and I will see you next time. Oh, there's...
Thousand.